Hey folks, welcome to Market Technical Analysis by InTheMoneyStocks.com, your leader in pure technical analysis, avoiding all that Wall Street hype. Today, Tuesday, May 20th, 2008. Well, hope everyone had an okay day today on the hard sell-off across the board in the markets. As we look today at the markets and the technicals, we're going to touch on the reasons that the media has portrayed as the market selling off, how we knew this was probably coming, obviously based on the chart pattern on a nice M top, double top pattern with a nice tail from yesterday's hard sell off that dictated that we're most likely going to see more downside. And we'll continue to look at the various indicators that are pointing towards where this market may be headed on the downside. We continue to believe the market is very, very oversold, overbought right now. Again, overbought. And we continue to feel that oil is extremely, extremely toppy here. And while it did advance today again, uh, up another couple dollars near 129, this is an extremely overbought situation that took place this morning when Boone, good old Boone Pickens came out on CNBC and decided to tell everyone that he had gone long oil after being wrong in January and being short oil and had reversed his position to go long. So again, as soon as we saw that in the markets this morning, he was on between 8, 8 o'clock and 8.15. You then saw an oil reversal. Oil was trading down early, and then right away you saw it spike up as soon as he said that oil was going to 150. Now, in our belief and from our experience, the more of these guys like Goldman Sachs and Boone Pickens and all these other guys saying that oil's going higher, the more amateurs will become long, and in, in turn with that, the more likelihood of a rollover becomes. So while it did give a little juice to the oil market, it's more and more likely when we feel it is from the indicators that we're looking at that you're going to look at a drop in oil, a substantial drop in oil very, very soon. So we'll continue to look at that, and but let's take a look at the intraday market for now. Here's the intraday ES, and as we look at the intraday ES here, you can see that pretty much all day, aside from a few little bumps and, and, and jumbles here, the markets really did, did sell off most of the day. And you can see it started very, very early, right with the PPI. Now the interesting thing about the PPI is that for the first time in a long time, and I mean a long time, core PPI actually showed some signs of inflation. And we've been preaching this for a while here at InTheMoneyStocks.com, saying that almost every consumer good we buy out there, even excluding food and energy, we all know there's inflation in food and energy because it's costing us more and more as the dollar's gotten weaker, but even as excluding that stuff, you're going to see a trickle-through effect because oil is in plastics, Oil is in everything we talk about, you know, everything basically we're buying at these stores, um, metals and everything, and we all know the commodity rush up in metal prices, food, it doesn't matter, food trickles through, and so forth. So across the board, you saw a pretty nice little jump in inflation at the PPI, which is the producer price index, and again, at some point, that'll trail trail off into the consumer price index, and you're going to have an up, up move in, uh, in inflation. Now the key is here, guys, is when does it start to really cause the Fed to think about raising interest rates? And can they inv raise interest rates? I mean, after all, the economy's borderline recession or so, we believe, if not in a recession already, yet the market obviously hasn't been saying so. Uh, but maybe today was the first chink in the armor. We saw, let's take a look here at the market indexes, and you can see today the NASDAQ was down about 24 points, the Dow was down 200 and the S&P was down about 13 points. So the NASDAQ and the, and the S&P were down about a percent each, and the Dow was down about 1.5%. Uh, so looking at the intraday chart here, you see it started right off here with the PPI number right here, and this is 8.30 when it came out, and you just basically saw constant selling, constant selling, and then you got a nice little bounce here right into the 20 moving average, a little dip, and almost a little bit of an M pattern formation there, and the M completion, a little bit of an A pattern, another sell-off to a double bottom, and then right towards the end of the day, the last half an hour of the day, the markets got a little bit of a bid, and they were able to pair some of their losses uh, and close up here, moving up right around this 50 moving average here. So that's what happened basically on the intraday uh, market, and volume was again light today, but it was heavier than yesterday, and I think that's important to note because we talk about how light volume has been on the up moves in the market and throughout the course of the day yesterday when the market was rallying before the reversal, the mega reversal, we saw the uh, volume extremely light. When the markets reversed yesterday, volume kicked in. Again today, volume was pretty light, but it was heavier than yesterday and heavier than all the rally days. Uh, borderline about 2 million contracts traded on the ES. So very, very interesting to note that on the down days, again, you're seeing a little more volume, not much more, but a little more volume. 
Now let's take a look at the daily charts because this is where it all gets fun, guys, when we talk about possible pattern formations and the technicals of the charts. Obviously, we know about the run-up that we had. This is when we believe the market had topped out. It did touch a little bit higher than that area here, but now we have seen that reverse. And in terms, terms of a pattern of technical nature, what you see here is a possible M pattern formation with a little bit of a tail on top or it's possible topping tail. Again, piercing the 200 and a lot of longs, amateur longs will go long on that pierce before the end of the day and they get caught off guard when it comes back right back in. And then you can see a nice little sell right there. So again, we're going to have to follow this pattern, but is this a possible M double top with a little bit of a topping tail there? That's possible. We won't know again until until we get more of it played out. Now, a lot of people will say, well, why did we move up last week? Well, we always talk about options, options expiration. Last week was options expiration, and it's full of games. There's no doubt about it, folks. If the, if the big money wants to drop this market, very likely on the light volume, they wanted to push it up and make it look like it was going much higher to get even more longs on board. You know, we really don't know. I mean, I, it's, I wish I had a microphone in, in uh, Paulson's office and, and some of these guys that really are, are the PPT, the Pro Plunge Protection Team, or the uh, President's Working Group, and, and all the, you know, the Goldman Sachs's of the world and so forth, but we don't. So we just have to go on speculation, obviously. And from here, it looks like you got a little bit of a pullback into that 20, which is obviously support, as we had talked about, and a little bit of a move up here. But any way you cut it, we've been adamant that this market needs to fall, and it does look like it may be starting that today, and we'll continue to watch to see if it continues. Now, the one little area of caution here is going into the later half of this week and uh, next Tuesday. Uh, this weekend is Memorial Day weekend, and volume will get very light on Friday. So it's important to note that on light volume, the market can get a little bit of a buoy-type uh, effect. And again, on Tuesday, you have the hangover effect from the long weekends. People extend their weekends to a four-day weekend or a five-day weekend, and it could be light volume again. So while this market doesn't and will continue, we believe it will continue down, it's important to note that you, there's, there's key things, pattern price and time and volume. And volume is definitely a key that needs to be watched when analyzing the markets and understanding the markets. So continue to watch this possible M topping pattern and a beautiful tail. You don't get a better tail than that yesterday on the mega reversal, and, and that was a powerful reversal. So let's take a look at the NASDAQ, and the NASDAQ was down about 23 points today, and the NASDAQ actually has been the stronger index as we've always talked about. And this is again a beautiful chart and why I want to show it. Because you had a push here, and look at it broke the 200 moving average, and we always talk about it when it's an extension move here. Extension moves are moves of, of great, a great move anyways, a big powerful move. When you break through a powerful moving average like this, oftentimes it can be a fake out. And I and I we always caution you guys on this and we constantly talk about it is that you got to pay attention to that. When a move has gone this far and then you break a 200 moving average so far away after you've taken out the 20 and the 50, you have to be on caution and say, "Listen, this market's extended. This is needs a pullback. I'm not going to believe that it's going to continue to go up much more even if it does get above a moving average." And in that case, I'm sitting on the sidelines, or I'm going to start to accumulate a small short position up here and look for the market to come in. All right. Now, could you be wrong? Yeah, you know, it could go a little higher. It could go here or here. But this is a major over, over, overbought position in the markets, and it does need to come in any way, a way, shape, or form. Now, maybe it only comes into here. Maybe it only comes down to here. Who knows? Maybe it only comes down to the 20 moving average before moving up. But you can't go long on a break of the 200 there, and it, when it just pouts above and then you get a bunch of little choppy candles above. I've seen that pattern way too many times in the market and it's it's probably about 90% of fake out. 90% of fake out and we saw it today again. Worked to a T on the NASDAQ. So keep that in mind. All right, The first break of, the, of a first moving average off the bottom is different and this is a good lesson. I'm glad we're doing this today because see how it's down here at the lows and you break and then you come back and retrace. Now this is a buying opportunity for sure. All right, Without a doubt because you're close to the lows. All right, you've been in a major oversold position from the move down here. So on a break of that, you can, you know what, you take a long right on the break. That's okay because you're at the bottom. You know, you have your stop. Everyone always maintain a stop. We always talk about stops and their importance, but at least you're at the lower end of the chart here. Here, the extension move is on the mega on the upside. And so to, break, to buy up here is just asking for trouble, and you always want to minimize risk. What do you think is the more worthwhile trade? A break here when you're off the lows this much, or to buy on a break here. Obviously, you have that much more of a move up, so you could always fall back down much further. So the, the risk is much higher on this trade than on this trade. 
and that's the key guys is that you always want to as a trader as an investor it doesn't matter the risk has to be small reward needs to be big you have to put things in charting patterns with price pattern and time and volume and all psychological indicators that you can use you put those all together and you'll be a profitable trader or investor for your life it's a lifelong thing teach a man to fish you know a fish for life in any case folks as we get got a little sidetracked here on the video just to touch base is that technology was okay today even though the nasdaq was down you still saw google baidu apple research in motion all up today goldman sachs and we pointed out the xlf as being one of our main indicators telling us that there was going to be more selling in this market because when the market had gone like this and this is from yesterday's video so check it out XLF, the financials were not participating. That's a dead sell signal, and that's why we were so adamant in yesterday's video that this market was going to fall. All right, guys, enough for today. Take care. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a good night.